Hello and welcome back to another impartial off the record. I'm Monet Funka. And I'm Cara Peregrino. We are excited to bring you another off the record, different from our normal formatted show, where we will talk about all things little and large. Today we are talking about where we grew up and we're going to have some fun with slang. I'm so excited about this. Um, But first, head over to impartial.com and sign up for our free weekly newsletter. You can also find links to all our social media and most importantly, our Ko-fi page where you can support this channel financially. Yup, give us that money, 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 money. Me and my husband were actually talking about this the other day and we were just like, it is hard work, guys, bringing you good content. Like we put a lot of time into this and I think we'll talk in a minute about how difficult that's been recently. Yeah. But yeah. if you're able to support us financially, it just yeah. makes it so much easier for us. Yeah. yeah, and that's not a complaint in any way. We obviously love doing it, but it is a good incentive for us if we get financial support from you guys because that means we can do bigger things. Um, it gives us an excuse to put more hours into the show, which at this point we can't. Um, but we're happy to do what we're able to do just now, uh, with, the with the limited support that we have now. So yeah, as you guys could tell from our last two episodes, we are in a different studio for lack of a better term. Um, we're in the same house, but we're just moving things around. We, we didn't plan this in any way whatsoever, but Cara and I both, are in undergoing moves. <laughs> mm. so, I'm not in the same house. I'm just saying. No. Uh, I'm in a house you will only have ever seen in last week's episode yes. and you will never see again. Yes. I'm, I'm in the same house that we usually film in, but I'm just in a, another room. And yeah, I mean, it's just been a lot. So we have been moving furniture about and trying to organize moves and it's just been a lot trying to sell property, which if you've ever done that, Lord bless you, because it is a lot. So um, so that's why we are in a different space and probably will be in different spaces for a little while until things kind of settle down next year. Um, but we will announce what is happening next year when we get to that. And by next year, I mean next season. It'll still be 2023. It'll just be season four. Yeah, which brings us to the point that we will be taking a break in a little while. Um, I can't remember the exact dates. Monet will tell you because she's the organized one. (laughs) But we will have a summer break because we really need it. Like, we do work really hard for you guys. Um, And sometimes we just need to, like, rest and recharge and do a bunch of other things as well. Because we we have other things going on in our lives. Surprise! (laughs) Surprise. Um, Yeah, so there are other things. Like, I have some deadlines coming up. Monet's got some things happening. (laughs) And... uh, they're big things, but no, I can't tell you about it. Huge not things. It's not, we're not there yet, but we will be yeah. soon. Maybe we'll have another off the record, if not this season, at the beginning of next season, just tell you guys what's been going down. But um, but yeah, so we, yeah. we have a few more episodes for you this season. Um, another guest or two coming on the show as well. And then we'll take July and August off at least. But don't worry, we're not going to completely go away. We'll be on social media. We'll also be bringing you some um, some highlights from past episodes, some really good replays for some of you who've just joined us the last few months. And um, yeah, so we, we're not going to go away. But in terms of new content, we're looking at a few more episodes this side of season three. And then as season four kicks off in the autumn, We'll be back with new, new, new content. Yeah, so we're really excited about that. We are excited. And so today we're just having a bit of fun because we've had a really busy week. And so the amount of research we were able to do for this episode was limited. So we thought we'd have an OTR and we'd have a little bit of fun with our our backgrounds where we grew up. And um, as you guys know, I am not from Scotland, though this is where both Cara and I live. Um, and so we wanted to talk about our different backgrounds and then do a little game with slang. So I'll let 
You talk oh. first, Cara. I was just going to say, Monet does not come from Scotland, and that may not surprise you. What may surprise you is that I actually wasn't born here either. Very true. So, yeah. Um, the short story is, my dad was in the uh, Royal Air Force, which is the British version of the Air Force because everything's royal here. <laughs> and, um, and so we moved, I was actually born in England, in the south of England, and we moved around a bit before we ended up in Scotland when I was about five. So I have lived most of my life here, but sometimes people are surprised to hear that I wasn't actually born here. <laughs> yes, because you are such a wee Scottish old lady <laughs> in a young person's yeah, that's body. True. <laughs> Um, but no, no, yeah, you weren't, you weren't. And, and that is a surprise because your dialect is so Scottish, but your dad is Welsh, 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 right? Yeah. So he doesn't sound Scottish. Uh, My mom, my mom was born in Glasgow. So it makes me a true Brit. I was born in England. My dad's from Wales and uh, my mom's from Scotland. So all we're really missing is the Northern Irish connection. There you go. We'll find one. We'll, we'll, we'll explore the family tree and find one. Um, yeah. So I grew up and basically spent all my life until moving to Scotland in the same place, which is Los Angeles, California. I was born in Rio, Los Angeles. This is something that I'm a little bit snobby about. And I think I've been kind of rude to people in the past. So I've talked to you in the past. I apologize for my rudeness and my snobbishness. But, you know, I've met people in there, you know, in Scotland and they'll be like, oh, I'm from L.A. And I'm like, oh, what part? And they'll be like, oh, just like Orange County. And I'm like, (laughs) that is not Los Angeles. Uh, but it might as well be at this point, let's be honest. Uh, so I apologize to all of you people that I've been snobby to because there is a little bit of a NorCal, SoCal beef, even though Orange County is in SoCal. Um, and that's not one of our slang words today. But yeah, so I do talk like a Californian, though I guess it's a bit of a blend now. I kind of speak a little bit with some Scottish dialect and maybe inflections sometimes. If you talk to my California friends, they say I sound Scottish, which makes the average Scottish person laugh hysterically. Sometimes they'll use phrases and I'm like, I don't even notice. They are Scottish <laughs> yeah. phrases or Scottish sayings. I don't yeah. even notice because like you say them so naturally. It yeah. doesn't feel weird hearing them from you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think I think when we jump into slang here in a minute, Kara definitely has the advantage Um, because I still talk like this. I still talk like a Californian pretty much, but, uh, so she's been exposed to me, unfortunately, for all these years. Well, interestingly, so the city that I spent a lot of my childhood in is called Dundee and it's on the east coast of Scotland. Um, just, if you look at a map, there's like a little dog's head shape sticking out. That's Fife. (laughs) And just above the dog's head is, uh, just above the ear of the dog's head on the other side of the river is Dundee. And linguists have actually done extensive studies into the Dundonian dialect <laughs> and have come to the conclusion, I'm not joking, they've come to the conclusion that it's so, it's different enough from English that it could be classed as a language in its really? own way. Really? Really? Mm. Wow. That's how I feel about Northeast uh, dialect, which I guess, yeah, like, um, yeah. Doric is its own dialect. Doric is its own yeah. dialect, but it sounds like if you hear people speak Doric, you think, well, you speak in English, right? It's like, it has surprisingly a strong Dutch influence. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's very, it's very hard to understand, but we won't get, we won't get too deep in the weeds. We will just jump into it. So we, I have a list of California slang, which if you're from another part of the country, you'll probably recognize some of these things as well. Because again, a lot of California culture bleeds into our television and our films, and that has been spread across the world for better or for worse. Um, But... I will be at the disadvantage. Maybe. Maybe I know more than... Maybe not. Mm. I I picked some that I thought you might know. Because okay. we were talking about doing um, slang from when we were younger. So I was really struggling to find, like, UK slang because the UK is so varied. Yeah. Um, so I just went with things we said at school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you may have heard some of these, like, on the street. Yeah. Where okay. you live. 
Sounds good. Sounds good. So I'll let you go first. You tell me the word and I'll see if I know what it means. This one you may not know or you might because I've told you about it before, but it is a distinctly Dundonian thing. Like nobody else uses this word. Okay. So if you hear somebody say this word, you'd be like, Dundee. Yeah. So it's Kundi. Say it None again. of these are inappropriate, by the way. Yeah, no, no, These no, are no. all yeah. above board. <laughs> no, no. Kundi. Hundi. Like a hundred? No. Hundi, like H-U-N-D-Y. C-U-N-D-I-E. C? Mm-hmm. Kundi. Oh, I'm, I have no idea. <laughs> it's a drain. Apparently, it's short for conduit. <laughs> I don't know why. My dad was telling me this the other day. I was like, I've lived, you know, I lived in Dundee since I was five. So, you know, 23 years I've been hearing this word. Mm-hmm. And it was only when I was about 26, 27 that my dad was like, oh, yeah, this is where it comes from. And I was like, what? <laughs> Kundi. <laughs> but yeah, so, Kundi is a drain. Okay. I was hearing Hundi, like like Hyundai or Hund- Hyundai, like the car. Okay, Kundi. I would have never guessed that in a million years. Okay, uh, I'll start off with an easy one. Bail. Bail, like bailing on someone? Yes. So, like, I don't even know how to describe it, but, like, I know what it means. Yeah. Like, when hey, you I'm, bail on someone, you, yeah. just, you don't turn up or whatever. Yeah, it, it also means, like, to leave. So, like, mm-hmm. all right, guys, let's bail. Like, you know, or, like, let's bail out. You would use that to like, we're going to go. So yeah, to we use it kind of like in uh, Western culture to mean like someone's flaked on you. But mm-hmm. in California, you would use it also to mean like, let's leave. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I have one you might know. Okay. Noob. Noob. Like, yeah. s- like someone who's new at something, like a newbie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I was trying to think like 2000 slang when I was in school <laughs> and I was like, noob. They used to say noob all the time. <laughs> okay, I've got another one for you. OG. Oh, is it like original gangster? No. That's yeah. what it stands for. Yeah. But it's like the original one of something. <laughs> <laughs> So it's usually used to describe someone who is like really good or really authentic or really old school. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the example, um, I would say like, oh, now I can't think of a good example. (laughs) I'd be like, oh, you know, Frank, he's um, he's a real OG. He's really down to earth. Or, like, the way so-and-so wears their hair cut is, like, real OG. Like, you know, it's like a, it's like a, it's a compliment. But, like, oh, that's, like, the original gangster. Like, that's real OG. I'll even shorten it sometimes to G. Like, oh, that's real G. You know, like, real gangster. Oh, I heard you say that before. I didn't realize it was the same thing. (laughs) I said that to someone, um, a mutual friend, one of, uh, a guy who Daniel went to university with and he was over and I was like I said oh yeah that's real G and he said is G stand for genius <laughs> and I was like I didn't realize I had even said slang I just was like what no like gangster original gangster like you know so that's a fun one yeah I have heard it before but yeah yeah okay here's another one bunking like bunking off bunking is so that, like yeah. you would you would go into class and they would take the register and they'd be like oh is is we ryan here and you'd be like who's bunking and then oh is it does that mean like uh like taking the day off like ditching or like not going yeah to class? like ditching school okay all right yeah bunking. So it's, it's a way you used to like wind up the teacher because like anybody who didn't answer quick enough or oh. who, who wasn't there and was just a little bit late, you'd be like, they're bunking. Yeah. And then it would go on their record and then the teacher would get mad. <laughs> okay, so the next one is heavy. I think I can make a guess at it, but I'm not sure enough. Like, I'm not confident enough. 
Pick a guess. Go for it. I legit don't know. <laughs> it's when something is very sad or depressing. Oh. Yes. I do know that. Yeah, so. I didn't realize that was slang. Oh, man, that's heavy. Like, it's heavy yeah. literally means, like, it is, you can't carry it. But yeah. it's used to be mean, like. Oh, man, that's real sad. Like, I'm sorry you're going through that. Yeah. I mean, someone used that on me the other day. I was like, they were like, oh, that's so heavy. And I was like, yeah. But I didn't realize that was slang. I just, yeah, like, so normal. <laughs> yeah. See, I mean, some of it, like, I don't even know, like, how, how wide, how widely spread these are. So, okay. Ah, uh, but it was my Californian, one of my Californian friends, actually, that said that. So. There you go. That's it. There you go. Um, okay, here's another one. Cheesing? Cheesing. Is that like teasing somebody? No, cheesing, like C-H-E-E-S-I-N-G. Like, um, oh, she said my shoes were so cool and now I'm absolutely cheesing. Oh, like you're blushing or like you're really happy? Like grinning, like yeah. a cheeser. Do you okay. know what a cheeser is? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, it couldn't like be a that little. grin. <laughs> Yeah, cheesing is like when you have a cheesy grin. Yeah, okay, I like that. Uh, yeah, because I was, oh, look at you cheesing. Like, I would I would kind of associate it with, like, teasing somebody because they're so smiley. A little bit, yeah. but, like, you'd be like, oh, she's absolutely cheesing now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, post up. Post up? Yeah. I have no idea on that one. So it means, like, to stand around. Uh, so you'll, like, you know, like, you'll be like, oh, um, Cara was over there, you know, I saw her post up at the store or whatever. Or, like, you know, um, like, post up, I'll be right back. Like, wait here, kind of, like, post up. It's just, like, you're just standing around. So you would do, I think you would associate this with, like, you know, Hanging out on the street. <laughs> okay. Uh, but really, it means to, like, you know, to be anywhere. So, like, even if you were, like, going to spend the night over someone's house, like, you'd be like, oh, yeah, how about I just post up here? And then, like, we'll we'll bail out tomorrow. You know? Slang. Okay. I understand that now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard post up. Uh, I don't know that one. Okay. But you know what that is? It's an absolute belter. So, <laughs> belt, <laughs> belter. Belter. Is that like uh, like a good one? Yes. A good one. Okay. But can you use it like... Oh, but oh, like, it comes from like, like a, it makes me... Like, it's something that really, really makes you laugh. Okay. So, like, you're holding your belt with laughter. Okay. So, so someone can be a belter. Like, you know, when you get someone who's just, like, absolutely hilarious, you'd be like, oh, he's such a belter. Yeah. But, like, if you told a hilarious joke, so that would also be a belter. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. See, but, like, I've heard that before, but, like, I just think, like, oh, it's some sort of positive compliment. I can't tell you exactly what it is, though. Okay. Uh, dime piece. Dime piece. I've heard this in rap music. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't think what it means. Yeah, so it's basically calling someone a 10. Like, it means someone's oh. really attractive. It's usually referred to a woman. Like, oh, that person's a real dime piece. Like, she's a 10. Uh, because our 10 cents is called a dime. Okay, so contextually, I would never have got that. Yeah. Is. But now I know what a dime is. Yeah, it's there not you go. just a... <laughs> A caramel chocolate bar for those of you who are in the UK. <laughs> no, no, it's spelled totally different too. Yeah, so like, you know, we would say of our husbands that they're a real dime piece, you know, and they would say that of us, won't they? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they're better. <laughs> they better, yeah. Better, yeah. If not, you can call him my next one, which is a gadgy. A gadgy? Yeah. Have you not heard this? <laughs> No. Have you not heard this on the streets? Like kids yelling at each other, yeah, gadget. No. <laughs> no. That's amazing. 
Um, it's like I had to look it up because, like, I know how to use it, but yeah. I'm like, what does this actually like? What does it mean? What contextually? Where does this come from? Yeah. And a gadget yeah. is like you might have heard Raj. No, so like Raj or Gadge or Raj Gadge or Raji Gadgey <laughs> or just Gadgey. <laughs> You just make it's just stuff someone, up now. <laughs> it's just someone who's like not very well educated, is probably a petty criminal and oh. is usually quite young. Okay. So like a Ned or a Gadge? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Gadgey. I'm going to have to use that. But I don't know to whom I would say. Just it. be careful who you use it on yeah. because people get quite offended. If you say something, oh, you're a gadget, they would probably punch you in the face. So. <laughs> I mean, we are in Glasgow, so we have to be careful. <laughs> okay. Um, swerving. Say again. Swerving. It sounds like something cool people would say. <laughs> Maybe. No idea. So it just, so it's used literally to mean like you are swerving from one lane to another, like you've swerved mm-hmm. your car. Uh, but it could also mean that someone's moving too quickly, like, you know, like, you know, like you better slow down, you're swerving, like, you know, you're, you might say that to somebody who's like, just like going from this to that, like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but it's kind of cool, like car lingo. You know, like, oh, you know, I saw him swerving around the corner or like, you know, you know, I don't like to drive with him. Like he's always swerving. Like, you know, so it just means that you're like moving quickly, you know. Okay. Um, In that case, I'll give you my next one, (laughs) which your person who's swerving needs to do. You'll get this one. It's like 2000 slang. You'll know it. They need to chillax. Chillax. (laughs) You need to chill and relax. You need to calm down. Chillax. (laughs) See, I would consider that a California slang. It may have come over via television. Yeah. But like, yeah. yeah. It's like you'd text your friend and be like, what are you doing? Be like, chillaxing. Chillaxing, yeah. Maxing and relaxing. Okay. Okay. This one is, you might have, I feel like you definitely have British slang that like is on the equivalent of this. Um, It's called janky. Janky. I think that's like one of my ones. Really? Is it like, well, I'll not use it. Is it someone who's kind of a bit, eh? So, like, yes, you but, would maybe use it to describe something rather than someone, but you probably could okay. describe someone as janky. Yeah. I, I really want to use a Scottish word, but I also just <laughs> don't want to give it away too soon. So the de- the definition is... <coughs> The definition is something of low quality, cheap, or unreliable. So, for example, someone might say, this computer is so janky, it barely works. Or, Mm -hmm. ooh, that car looks janky. You know, like, I wouldn't trust it. You know, so something like, it's just kind of like, it just looks cheap and ghetto. Like, there's nothing. But you could maybe call somebody janky, too. Like, you know. Okay. (laughs) It's not quite the word I was thinking of. But, yeah, like, sketchy or... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have never heard this outside of Dundee, outside of my childhood. But Menche? Menche? Yeah, this is my Menche. Menche. No, I have no idea what that can be. <laughs> it's uh, it's your graffiti tag. Your Menche. Oh, interesting. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. But, like... So many people I knew when I was in in high school were like, ah, oh, that you can't use that. That's my menche. And you're oh. just like, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Our upstairs neighbor is a graffiti artist, so I'm sure he would know what that is. He might not. It might just be a weird Dundee thing. Maybe. But. I'm sure he does, though. He knows graffiti artists all over the country. Anyways, the next one is Whip. See, in the UK, a whip is someone who works for a political party and goes around making sure that everybody votes correctly. But I'm pretty sure that's not what you're talking about. We have that in the US as well. Yeah, like a a house whip or a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, this is a car. 
So it's like the way you refer to your car, like, oh, yeah, like, let's hop in my whip. Or like, oh, yeah, I saw her riding in her whip. Like, it's your car. How do you spell that? Like, whip, W-H-I-P. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I was like, the writer in me is like, whip is work in progress. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. No, it's W-H-I-P. Like a whip. Okay. I have four more, by the way. So I, I, if you've got less than that, then... I um, have four because I thought one while we were talking. Perfect. I'm going to bust out my janky equivalent. (laughs) Uh, Mink. Mink. A mink is a person. Um, Minky is like a description. Minky. See, I would would think that it means... M-I-N-K, not like M-A-N-K. Yeah, I would think, like when I hear mink... I think of Ming, like Mingin. So oh, yeah, I'd, Minger. Yeah. yeah. Is it yeah. the same? Like, it's something that's gross. And Similar, yucky. yeah. Mink or Minger or whatever. Okay. Yeah. okay. yeah, I like that. I love, like, I use Mingin way too often. I probably don't know how to use it properly, but I'll be like, ugh, it's real Mingin in here. Like, if something is, like, gross or even smells weird, I'll be like, it's Mingin. Yeah, mingin'. no, that's right. Yeah. It smells Mingin in here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Clutch. Lunch. Clutch. Like the thing in the middle of your car. Clutch. Clutch. Uh, There's a little purse that you hold. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually similar to the the thing in the middle of your car. So it, it means to provide something at the perfect moment. So, you know, when you adjust the clutch... It's because you put the car in the gear right at the right moment or whatever. So, yeah, that's what clutch means. So you be like, what's the example they gave? Thank you for picking us up from the party when it was raining. That was clutch. Like, so, like, you just did at the right time. I've heard it mostly referred to in sports. So, like, if you have, like, a member of a basketball team or something who is just really reliable for, like, uh, mm-hmm. outside, like, you know, three-pointer before the buzzer, buzzer you'll be like, ah, oh, you know, that player, he's so clutch because he knows how to, like, you know, put it in the basket right when it needs to be there. Um, so, like, yeah, somebody who's, like, reliable or, like, does things, like, right when you need them to. Do you say that you use a lot of California slang, but I've not heard most of these. Really? Really? Yeah. I'm so well, I tried to pick stuff that wasn't super obvious, but I feel like I say mm-hmm. I feel like I say these things, but maybe I don't. Maybe, maybe I'll I... just start noticing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it is. So minter. Minter. Minter, like mints as in the taste or minter. Oh, minter. Like someone who's stupid? No, it's like something that's embarrassing, like what a mentor. Oh, okay. I don't know where it comes from or why, but like you might be like, oh, uh, I wasn't paying attention in class and then my teacher like asked me a question and I didn't know the answer. It was such a mentor. Oh. <laughs> well, I should use that phrase a lot for myself. <laughs> um. But it could also be a positive thing though, like, yeah. oh, um, I won a prize at prize giving. I was such a minter, like I was really embarrassed by it. Okay, okay, so like, you know, it, it's like usually got an embarrassing connotation, even if it's like a cheeky, mm-hmm. like okay, yeah. Or if something was embarrassing, you come away and you'd be like oh, minter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So the next one is definitely California, but I feel like it's very obvious from the name. Or the words. But June gloom. June gloom? Mm-hmm. Is this, like, weather-related? Mm-hmm. In June? Yes. Do you get particular weather in June, like, cloudy or something, and it's that's your June gloom? Yeah, so in the beach areas... Uh, this is actually true. So I lived, at, I lived near the beach for 10 years, basically. And... This is most beach weather. You just get, in California at least, it would be cloudy most of the day. Um, But because a lot of California slang is uh, like surfer slang, June gloom became like more widespread because if you're surfing, like you'd be like, oh, it's that June gloom, you know. 
because uh, you're at the beach and you expect the beach to be sunny and beautiful, but like actually there's a marine layer that has to burn off like almost every single day. Sometimes it doesn't burn off till the end of the day. Sometimes it doesn't at all. So it's just cloudy near the beach. So there you go. June gloom. All right. Havering. I think you're havering. Havering. Uh, uh, I don't know. It could be like stalling. No? No. No? No, it's like no. when you when you don't believe someone, you're like, ah, you're havering. Oh, so you think they're like winding you up. They're like lying or like, no. Yeah, like you're lying or you're talking yeah. nonsense or something. Oh, okay. Oh. Interesting. You know, like, like if a kid comes up to you and they're like, ah, oh, my mom scored like a million points on... This game she was playing, you'd be like, mm, I think you're Haven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're lying. Or like if somebody's pretending to be like a certain like class of person, a class is the wrong word, we would say, oh, stop fronting. Like, why are you fronting? Like, you know, like mm-hmm. you're pretending, like that kind of or thing. Or like if someone's spreading gossip, you'd be like, nah, that's pure Haver's man. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. I genuinely really like that. Okay. Um, come up. Is that like up and coming? Kind of. It's a noun. No, it's a, it's a verb. I don't know what it is. It's an adjective. <laughs> it's all of the parts of language. No, come up. Like, um... Uh, so you can use it in different ways. You could be like, um, wow, nice flat. This is a real come up. Or you oh, like a step up from yeah. something before. Yeah. Or okay. like if, if I'm, if I'm like, oh man, Cara, I'm about to, um, uh, about to get my PhD and you'll be like, come up girl. Like, you know, like, okay. so it's kind of like a, you're stepping up in life. Like things are like yeah. improving for you. You're like yeah. on the next level. So we might we might say something like, "Oh, you're going up in the world." Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's basically like the ghetto version of "You're going up in the world." <laughs> slang, slang, slang version, not ghetto version. Slang. I also use ghetto as okay. a word as slang. Like, yeah. oh, that's so ghetto. Yeah. Yeah. I think I picked that up from you, possibly. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my last one is my husband's favorite <laughs> Scottish phrase that he's ever learned. Yeah. Um, you used it earlier, so you know it, but it just tickles me. Ned. Ned, yes. Ned. Uh, you know what? You tell me every time, but I forget what it stands for. Uh, it's but non-educated delinquent. Non-educated delinquent. Now, if you don't, if that means, if, that, if you're like a Ned, I don't understand that, and you're listening... It's just like the like the kids on the street with their track suits who like with their white socks and white trainers white and the trainers. white socks are tucked like the tracky bottoms are tucked into the white socks and they have a swagger like yes. there's a very distinct yeah. Ned swagger and yes. there's like a haircut that goes with it yes. and all sorts. Yes. They're probably called Ross Ryan or Greg as well. Ross Ryan or Greg? <laughs> that was what they were when I was in school. All the Neds were like Ross Ryan and Greg. <laughs> yeah, so I think like in California, you might call them like, I don't know, like a hoodlum or like these like kids in the street. They're basically like just kids in the street. I don't know. Gangsters probably wouldn't say that anymore. Gang banger. Gangsters is a little bit serious. It's more like serious. Nets, yeah, Nets. Nets are quite young, and yeah. although they like break windows and like key cars and stuff, they're they're fairly harmless. I'd Some, say, of yeah. jakeys, Some of them are jakeys. Some of them are jakeys. Jakeys are people who get drunk on cheap alcohol. Yes, there's. By the way, for American listeners, like the the vast array of british slang is so incredible like how much like we you know car could be so regional and still have a bunch of stuff i've never heard of in my life if you just go to each region in the uk and like ask them their slang like it's really really incredible whereas i don't think u.s like areas regions have like such specific slang we might Mm -hmm. have ways that we call things 
that are slightly different from other parts of the state, but it's not like so much like this is a whole different phrase I've never heard of and you're referring to something. People make jokes about the UK where you like you drive 10 miles and a bread roll is called something completely yes. different. Yes. It's ridiculous. It really is. It's really like that. It's really like that. Um, okay, so the last one I have, everyone from California will know, and this probably is not even that much of a shock to you, but the 405. The 405. I've heard that and I don't have the context for it. <laughs> it sounds like a postcode. <laughs> No, or a road. it is a freeway or a motorway, as you would say here. Now, the, the thing to do on the West Coast is to put the in front of a number, the number of the freeway it is. So um, here in Glasgow, we have the M8, right? Uh, and that might sound really obvious if you're used to doing that in your place. But like, that's not how people refer to uh motorways or highways or freeways in the states so people will say interstate they'll be like oh yeah you jump on the interstate interstate 10 interstate 110 or whatever uh but in california we refer to all of our freeways as the the 10 the 405 you know the 110 the 105 it's a very it's like it's not a very unique thing but it's definitely like a west coast thing of referring to the freeways and the 405 is like an institution like everyone know oh, the 405 like it's it's a highway that goes um northwest mostly in california and it's always jam-packed and it's like six lanes and it's like a massive beast of a thing so yeah the 405 you kind of like the a1 outside birmingham probably never been <laughs> <laughs> british people will probably just hear that and be like oh that <laughs> So, yeah, that's all we got. You didn't have any more, right? No, you're done. I'm done. I could think of a hundred more, yeah. I'm sure, but, yeah. I really expected you to know more of those, but I guess you're right. Like, maybe I don't speak that way as much anymore. Um, and I expected to know more of yours. I only got, like, two or something. Sorry. No, I, I knew oh, yours would be hard. I knew yours would be hard. I, I had so much fun with my husband. Like, I just come out with things. Like, I said to him the other day, he said, do you like this or this? And I was like, ah, it's much of a muchness. <laughs> and he just, like, looked at me completely blankly. And I was like, it's much of a muchness. <laughs> or, like, t t today he, he, like, coughed a bit when he was eating. And I was like, I promise I didn't grudge that to you. <laughs> and he was like what? what and I was like I didn't grudge it to you because this is the thing Scottish people say if you choke on your food they're like oh someone grudged it to you <laughs> see I love it I love it see you could live here decades and still not know all of the all of the weird fun slang that's uh that's involved so that's a little bit about us I had fun with this episode I thought it was really fun we maybe we'll do a follow-up in a few months we'll do like a part two slang of our of our different regions. I was, I was honestly surprised. I was confident I would know more of yours. Just yeah. because, like, in the UK, we get so much TV from the States. And, mm -hmm. like, so much is produced in Hollywood, which yeah. is California. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm totally going to know these. So. No, I guess it goes to show, too, like, there's so many things that I hear in everyday Scottish dialect that I couldn't point out the word what it means exactly but from context I kind of understand what someone's saying and so I might not even notice the word unless mm -hmm. I heard it like a hundred times you know so it, it, that that's how slang works sometimes too from context you know mm -hmm. you know what's going on it's like we always joke you and I will message each other and you'll be like yeah, taxes in it you know like you'll just say something like people don't really say in it here in Scotland that's more like of a like a it's an English thing, English yeah. thing but from context you hear it enough and it's a funny phrase it's just a hilarious phrase when people say that it just that. means isn't it yeah exactly. like that's all it is it's short for isn't it but so it's kind of like it's not used even properly for isn't it right like you'll like yeah. like the way folks will use it anyways I digress yeah. um but yeah so if you like this episode let us know in the comments let us know, have you heard any of this slang before? Were you guessing along? Did you know everything? If you're from Palestine. What was your score? If yeah. you got, well, how many did we do? 12 we did each. 12 if each. If you got more than 20, tell us. 
Yeah, I would be really, I'd be curious to know. I would be impressed. We didn't get more than 20. <laughs> no, we no. barely got a handful each. So um, I don't know who won. I think you definitely won, right? Because you got, you got heavy OG bail. Uh, come up. So let mm. four, five? Some half points for those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, let us know what you got in the comments and let us know if there's something you want to hear us talk about on the next Off the Record. We will be back um, hopefully next week with our regular schedule programming. If not, forgive us. Things are crazy. Uh, but uh, we definitely have, like we said, some more guests coming on this season, season three, before we take our long break. Um, but yeah, we're just loving hanging out with you guys. Another Off the Record. Until next time, we pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. Bye. Bye. Bye.